This is Real Sales Talk. Real sales advice from real sales practitioners. Giving you tips on how to dominate your sales quota are your co-host, Sean Mitchell and Phil Keen. This episode is brought to you by Convertist. We are incredibly excited to have partnered together with Convertist, which helps SaaS and services run managed outbound campaigns for teams looking to drive new pipeline opportunities. For teams targeting midsize and enterprise deals, Convertist integrates with CRMs like Salesforce to uncover actionable data in their sales processes, which enables them to find areas of improvement and double down on strategies that actually work. Benchmark the lead generation performance expected of a seasoned SDR and identify actionable areas of improvement in a sales process, all out of one place with Convertist. For teams looking to measure and enhance their performance of their sales funnel and architect a better revenue engine, cast an application to join the Convertist Slack group. It's at convertist.com slash slack. That's convertist, C-O-N-V-E-R-T-I-S-T dot com slash Slack, S-L-A-C-K. What is going on, everyone? It's Real Sales Talk. Hey. Phil and Sean going live with another episode. Phil, what's happening with you today? Are you closing some deals or what? I'm trying to. I got I got a hard stop. This is, we're going to make this a half hour. If not, if I drop off at the end, I'm sorry, guys. But we're going to get after it. Got to go. Got to go take off yep. and do a face-to-face meeting. So. Great. That's awesome. Cool. So uh, Real Sales Talk fam, we have got a really good one for you. Uh, we've got Ken Kupchik on the line, who is the author of this new book, The Sales Survival Handbook. And uh, we're going to be talking about his new book. You may know Ken from another place. Uh, Ken, oh, before I get into it, let me, let me first um, uh, welcome you and introduce you. Ken, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. So um, we were talking about this before we hit record. I I came across you and probably Phil as well from these amazing uh, memes that you put out all about sales. Um, I'm sure that has something to do with why you've decided to come out with, with a book. But why don't you give our listeners a quick introduction of who you are and what you do? Sure. So uh, as far as the sales community goes, uh, I am the creator of Sales Humor. Uh, I started it in 2014. It's, uh, it's a set of social media accounts. They're called Sales Humor. There's, there's a Facebook account, uh, a LinkedIn account, an Instagram account, uh, and a Twitter that is kind of just automated. Uh, but there's about 600,000 salespeople that follow the pages and they grow by a few thousand uh, new salespeople a week. And it's basically just really funny self, or at least I think it's funny, self-deprecating uh, kind of sales content. You know, we do um, memes, videos, there's articles that we post, you know, ask, engage the audience with questions. Um, and, you know, unlike a lot of sales content out there, it's not sanitized, it's not run through any corporate, uh, uh, you know, corporate uh, permissions or... Yeah, not at all. It's basically whatever I think is, you know, <laughs> is okay to put out there. It's going to be, you know, as long as it's not, uh, uh, you know, uh, o- overly offensive to anybody. A little bit offensive is okay. <laughs> so um, did you did you come up with this idea while, are you in sales still? Do you carry a quota? Or are you doing this full time? Yeah, so um, I actually came... I, I was not even in sales when I came up with the idea. I had worked in sales all through my 20s. Uh, and then I, I, throughout that time, I also wrote and did some entrepreneurial things. Um, I launched and sold a satire site. Um, you know, I created a board game, uh, a Spencer's Gifts type of board game. So I was always drawn to the humor stuff. Um, you know, and, and, and I created this after I left my last sales job. Uh, which was in 2014. Um, and now full time, I'm a consultant. Um, you know, I, I work with sponsors on sales humor and, um, you know, Adam over at Spiro, uh, I yeah. consult for Spiro technologies, which is a mobile CRM. So I help them with their content and things like that. Uh, and now I'm a published author. 
But that's amazing. As far as thank you, as far as a quota, um, I, I don't think I technically have a quota. I, it's whatever quota I set for myself, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the ideal place to go when you can set your own quota. You're your own boss, and you're not answering to anyone. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time coming. You know, it, uh, I've always wanted to, and as I'm sure you guys have, uh, and yeah, just a matter of doing it. So I've seen a, a lot of feedback on LinkedIn about the book from salespeople saying that it's a fantastic book and uh, it's really funny too. So it kind of you kind of continue on this theme of sales humor uh, into the book. But I, I'd love for background on where this idea came up to write the book and uh, a little bit of the premise. Sure. So um, you know, I think the idea to write the book. Uh, you know, I, 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 I was always going to write a book and I'm sure I'll write other ones. Um, the reason I settle on this one, uh, to start was, uh, because there was really nothing, there is nothing out there like it in, in the sales space. I mean, the closest thing you can even get to this is probably a Dilbert cartoon. Um, so, you know, all, most sales books are, you know, they're self-promotional. The author writes it because, uh, you know, they want to uh, get clients for their consulting or their training course or something like that. Um, and, or it's, you know, there are some kind of groundbreaking sales books like the Challenger Sale um, that kind of rethink selling. But there's nothing that that I thought that was a, a, a comprehensive handbook that covers every important thing that you need to know about sales um, but is also infused with humor and um, uh, and that and, and I think the, the the book that I modeled it on more or less was a book called the Zombie Survival Guide, uh, which was written by Max Brooks, which is Mel Brooks's son. Um, and that book did really well; it was really funny. So you know, our covers are even somewhat somewhat similar if you if you look at his um, his cover and ours. Uh, so that's that's kind of where the idea for the book came from. Also that, you know, there's a lot of other survival guides out there. There's, you know, the famous ones are, uh, you know, the, uh, the anarchist cookbook is a really famous one, even though the book is like banned in a lot of countries. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's in the mold of the, you know, the comprehensive guide. Yeah. I think it's really I, interesting. I, so like, I'm curious to hear like, what was the first thing that, that, came to your mind where you're like, you know what, I'm going to start putting a few funny things out there. Like, was there one event that, that started to do it or was it really just passion? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the best way I can explain it is, um, you know, I worked for some real psychopaths when I was in sales. I mean, I think truly textbook psychopaths, um, you know, two people that come to mind, former managers, uh, and you know, I think, I think in order to survive in sales, you really have to be able to laugh at yourself and laugh at the absurdity of it because you'll experience, and not just from managers, from customers, from coworkers, you know, you experience so much, uh, so much hilarious, insane stuff that, um, you have to have a sense of humor about it. You know, I was definitely always joked around with coworkers, you know, always tried to not take anything super seriously. Uh, but as far as sales humor goes, the idea really came uh, about uh, because I uh, saw a lot of these other humor pages. You know, there was, there was, I was in, uh, I was in the automotive space. I was working for a startup in Boston and uh, you know, we saw somebody in the, in, uh, we saw a page with like 400,000 followers that was in the mechanic space. Um, and we partnered with them to promote content. And I thought, Hey, why is there not a sales page, uh, for humor? I mean, I, I thought it was crazy that there wasn't one. And, you know, with my background, I thought who better to, to do it than me. I love, I love the introduction in the book. Uh, <laughs> it's really funny. So it says sales is the world's second oldest profession after prostitution. And although there are many similarities between the two careers, only one is legal. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this is uh, probably a great way to set up the fact that this is a, this is meant to be a useful tool, but also meant to incorporate uh, humor into uh, what you're, what you're trying to communicate. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to, you know, the hardest part of writing the book, honestly, was making it funny. You know, if this book was a straight sales book, if I just, if we took this entire book and just took all the humor out of it, I could have probably written it in, in a week. Um, you know, th there's, th you know, there's nothing profound and I hate to say this, but there's nothing profound in the vast majority of sales books. Um, you know, with all the content out there, it's kind of the same thing over and over again. So it was a matter of, you know, writing the series part and then, you know, pacing around my apartment for 20 minutes, thinking of like the perfect, uh, you know, way to add, way to introduce the, you know, the humor into that sentence or into that segment. You know what I'm thinking, Ken, this, this would be a perfect outline for a uh, standup comedy. This would be a perfect standup comedy sketch. This, this book here, if you just took this, went on stage, I think you could make this a big hit. <laughs> it's funny you say that I actually uh, have done stand-up comedy before. Uh, you know, who knows? Maybe someday. I don't know. You know, I'm more <laughs> of a homebody, but. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's let's kind of uh, dig into some of the chapters here. So the first one is uh, Welcome to Sales. And uh, you start kind of outlining um, helping people decide if, if sales is right for them. Uh, right. Uh, one, one of the one of the phrases I saw was, um, you know, coming out of the sales closet. So um, to talk a little bit about that. And um, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably in sales already, but maybe you're trying to dip your toes in the water. So just kind of out outline what, what that looks like, what people should be considering. Yeah. Um, well, you know, let's go back to, uh, to the, you know, how to tell if sales is for you. So we have a little quiz uh, in the beginning here of the book and the quiz kind of asks, you know, the following questions. Are you motivated by money? Do you have a strong work ethic? Are you good at handling rejection? Can you handle someone yelling at you on a regular basis? Are you okay with working nights and weekends until you feel like you're going to die? Can you survive on a strict diet of energy drinks and potato chips from the vending machine? Are you able to handle people repeatedly lying to your face as if you're some sort of gullible moron? Does an inconsistent income make you feel warm in your stomach area? When upset, are you able to cry on the inside like a winner? Do you enjoy a challenge even when it's statistically impossible and defies any and all logic? Are you able to smile at someone despite every single human instinct telling you not to? In your opinion, is free time overrated? And do you thrive in a fast paced environment where you have to hide in the janitor's closet in order to find one single moment of sweet solitude. You know, this is all based on experience. Uh, you know, it obviously it's a tongue in cheek, but is it really that off what sales is like? You know, I ask you guys. So, I mean, I think it leads me to my next question is, do you cry on the inside like a winner? That's, that's all I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think you kind of have to, or you got to go in the janitor's closet uh, if, uh, if you really need to, to let it all out. <laughs> So talk about like as you start to prepare for for getting into sales and mentally starting to to think about all these things because it's it's a tough game and I think that's why there's some humor in it. Um, how do you think about I guess coming mentally prepared for work? Because a lot of that's what it was talking about there. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I, I'll get a little bit serious, uh, you know, away from the book, but I think uh, I think you really have to have some some sort of uh, reason or drive for wanting to succeed. Um, in whatever industry you're going in. I mean, it, it definitely helps to, you should, if you, if you can always sell a product that you believe in, if you don't, you know, you're, you're going to make your job twice as hard. Um, but as far as becoming mentally prepared, you know, know why you want to do it. If it's money, if you really want money, then that's a good reason. If you want to provide a better life for your family, that's a good reason. Um, you know, if you got nothing else to do, if, a sales job is the only job you got hired for, you know, then whatever it is inside that's going to drive you, you have to figure that out because you can't just show up and, you know, and not try. You'll fail. You will. I mean, you have to push, push, push constantly in sales. You have to. I've um, joked around often that uh, sales is like being bipolar. One day you're feeling freaking amazing because you just closed a big deal. And then literally the next day or maybe even two hours later, 
you feel like a loser and that, that uh, you know, maybe sales is not, not the right place for you. Um, my, my wife, my wife has gotten into sales recently and it's funny to see these, these same roller coaster emotions, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, from, from my wife who, who, um, you know, she, I guess she's, she's always been good at, at selling things indirectly, but now she's in a formal sales role. So it's really interesting to, to kind of see that. And, uh, my guess is this, this is something that you address in the book. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was just scrolling while you, while you were, while you were talking. So I have a chart here in the book and as you can see, it's a 50, 50 chart. And what this chart is, it's the entire emotional scale of a salesperson. So 50% of that, that scale is on top of the world, feeling confident, <laughs> friendly, energetic, and successful. And the other half is rock bottom, pessimistic, and feel like you will never close another deal ever. So I'm, Sounds I'm, about right. I'm with you. You can go from, in one day, you can go from feeling like life is great and things could not get any better to being so utterly depressed about your career that, you know, you start looking, uh, looking up college courses in engineering, uh, to try to get out of it. And I think it's normal, you know, uh, it's not, it's not unusual. So talk, uh, I think this is probably maybe where we can kind of bring a serious moment in here and, and maybe a teachable moment. Talk, talk about, um, now that, now that we know this, maybe some others that are listening to this podcast, um, or have not experienced that yet, how can someone who is in sales better anticipate that and, and handle that when it does hit them? Yeah, so I think it's a good question. I, I have to admit, I personally wasn't very good at it. Um, you know, my highs were high and my lows were low. Um, uh, you know, I think get, I'm getting better uh, as a, at, a, at it the older I get, but I, I used to work with a guy who gave me really good advice um, about this issue. So he was uh, a, con a top performer. You know, the guys made great money in sales, you know, probably averaged, you know, a quarter million a year for the last 15 years. Um, and he basically said that you should never let your highs get too high and you should never let your lows get too low. So if things are going great, keep it in context. If things are going bad, just keep plugging away. Um, you know, so kind of try to try to smooth out those um, uh, those peaks and valleys, and I think that's good advice. What I mean, I think I appreciate the fact that you use visuals in the book. I mean, being a sales guy, I'm, I'm kind of a dumb, you know most sales guys kind of are sometimes. So the visuals definitely helps a ton. But uh, no, I think that I think that's great advice of, of really slowing down and understanding. Like as long as you have a to keep working the process, trust the problem, and it definitely does help. So uh, that's a good call out. So talk about other things that, that they think are call outs in the book that you put together. Uh, I'm sorry, you broke up there. Things that are uh, important in the book? Any other key, yeah, either key ways that you had the book that you want to make sure that people are doing. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, one of the things I set out to do in the book is to cover topics that um, aren't covered in other sales books. So I'd say, you know, 60% of the book is about sales, uh, you know, things that are important in this, in your sales career to know. And the other 40% are kind of the lifestyle aspects of sales. Um, you know, so we cover, uh, you know, Sean, you went through some of the things in the beginning, what to expect the five stages of sales grief. Uh, you know, so we cover picking the right company and, and uh, spotting red flags coming out to your family and friends as a salesperson. We covered the different types of sales people, the different types of sales managers, and we basically put everybody into different categories. You know, as far as sales managers, there's the lunatic, uh, the nepotist, you know, that's the guy whose uncle owns the company, um, people like that, you know, your coworkers, there's the steady grinder, there's the invisible, that's the guy who just never shows up to work but never gets fired for some reason. Um, you know, <laughs> we talk about comp plans, um, sandbagging, how to deal with an inconsistent income. We talk about how to complain about the comp plan properly. You know, it's a timeless tradition in sales, complaining about the comp plan. Uh, the sales diet, uh, we cover mission impossible, which is dating while working in sales or having a relationship while working in sales. And that's difficult, uh, as an aside, because 
you spend all day chasing people around. So when you get out of work, the last thing you want to do is chase more people. So, you know, you get a little, you get a little lazy. It's, it's tough. Um, so we cover prospecting. That's kind of a traditional topic. The different types of customers. We discuss are buyers really liars? There's a famous sales term, buyers are liars. We take a look to see if that's true. Uh, not going to spoil that for anybody. Uh, how to overcome objections without tears. Uh, and then we have an entire section called after the sale which is what to do, what not to do with your commission check, how to handle going from here to zero, which we kind of just covered, uh, getting promoted sales managers, sales trainers, and how to spot the con men, which is huge, uh, as all three of us know uh, in the industry, uh, how to switch sales jobs, rules for quitting your sales jobs, a sample resignation letter, what to do and what not to do. And we cover PSSD, which is post-sales stress disorder. So that's kind of a comprehensive look at uh, at the book. It's it's a very non traditional sales book. Talk talk about uh, PSSD. I think this one is really really funny. What what is it? Yeah. So PSSD is uh, you know I don't think you necessarily will always get PSSD while working in sales because I don't I think it really depends on uh, the types of managers that you have, uh, but. PSSD is basically when you get to a point in your sales job, which uh, which has happened uh, to lots of people, uh, that um, where your your sales job is just stressing you out and affecting you so much that it truly affects your health. So um, I'm going to go through some of the symptoms of PSSD: uh, headaches, chest pains, and rapid heartbeat, insomnia. Sudden hair loss, violently slamming your phone down after a prospect sends you straight to voicemail, eating <laughs> eating an entire large pepperoni pizza by yourself on your lunch break, which actually sounds really good right about now, feeling jealous of the window cleaners because they get to work outside, fatigue, especially when putting on work clothes, Frequent colds or infections that come on immediately after your manager tells you to call your leads. <laughs> Rapid weight gain or weight loss, but probably weight gain. And dry mouth that can only be relieved with hard liquor. <laughs> so I'm sure, you know, some people listening that have worked in sales have experienced some of these. And my personal advice is if they get too bad, get another sales job. You know, because there's people that, that really push themselves to the edge and truly like adversely affect their health in the long term to make a living. I mean, it's true, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, th there's there's a lot of humor in, in this. And um, if if these things, it's totally true as well. I mean, the, the, the theme of this really, at least for me, is um, sales is an emotional roller coaster. And um, the very normal, normal feelings to feel great one day and not so great the other. Um, the the art behind being in sales is how to manage that and make sure that you're as consistent as possible. And if uh, these things are affecting you uh, by, um, you know, weight, massive weight gain or weight loss or substance abuse, which I mean is. I, I see it all the time in salespeople as, as a way to go, um, then, then, you know, maybe asking for some help from some professionals is, is kind of a, uh, an appropriate step. But I mean, on, on a, on a serious note, these are real, these are real things like, and they can develop into, uh, real, real issues like substance abuse. Um, it's, it's definitely a real deal. Absolutely. And I mean, it, you know, the economy is doing pretty well right now, uh, which, you know, my point being that I think being a salesperson in a good economy is a lot better than being a salesperson in a bad economy. But even in a good economy, that doesn't mean the pressure is off for salespeople. So you get the pressure no matter what. And, you know, one thing I found, uh, you know, in my uh, career that, uh, I'm interested to hear your guys take on is, you know, there's, there's uh, a few types of sales jobs. There's a sales job that is very stressful and doesn't pay a lot. 
there's a sales job that is very stressful and pays okay. And there is a sales job that's very stressful and pays a lot. I don't think there's, there's any non-stress sales jobs, but you might as well make a lot of money if you're going to deal with it is my point. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, one of the thoughts that came to my mind was life is too short in general to be selling something that you don't really love and are passionate about. And that has a big impact on whether you make money or not. If you're not passionate about it, that usually is conveyed to the person on the other side. And if they don't um, get that, that you're passionate about it, then you probably won't sell the product or service. So finding something that you really love and enjoy, I think is, is really key. Yeah, I totally agree. And following your Instagram, I bet I can name what you're passionate about. Uh, yeah. Probably so, but go, go ahead. I'll give you a guess or two guesses. Uh, I got two, two, uh, two guesses. You're passionate about Tesla's and you're passionate yep. about espresso coffee. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm glad that someone else is picking up on uh, what I'm putting down. <laughs> hey, I like, I like both of those things. So I'm with you. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Ken, it's been awesome to uh, chat with you and finally put the face to the sales humor brand. Um, before we jump into uh, some rapid fire questions exclusive for our YouTube page, I want to give you a chance to tell people where they can find uh, sales humor uh, content as well as where they can find the sales survival guide handbook. Sure. So uh, on Facebook, uh, just type in sales humor. It should be the first uh, first page that pops up. Uh, on Instagram, it's sales underscore humor. And on LinkedIn, it's sales person humor. Unfortunately, I had uh, somebody try to rip off the, the, the page before me, but it's sales person humor. You'll see it. It has the largest following. Uh, and the book is available on Amazon. It's available on Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, uh, and it's the Sales Survival Handbook. Uh, you can search Sales Survival Handbook, it'll pop up, or you can search my name, which is Ken Kupchik, K-E-N-K-U-P-C-H-I-K, -K -K, and I hope you check it out, and uh, it's definitely different, if, if nothing else. Absolutely, yeah. You'll definitely get a chuckle out of it, and, and I think that it's, uh, it's well worth the money because you'll get some insights, whether you've been in sales for a long time or are just getting into it or somewhere in between. It'll be a great read for you, for sure. So let's jump into some rapid fire, Ken. Um, so rapid fire is where we get into the minds of our sales guests and understand and learn how they think. So the first question that I've got for you, Ken, is how have your parents influenced who you are today? If you could think of maybe one or two things that you're like, ah, it's because of my parents that I am this way and it has influenced my profession and career. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know if I can answer the question quickly, but um, you know, I'm an immigrant. I'm a first generation immigrant. I was born in Russia, moved here when I was six. Um, so, you know, I think <laughs> that alone, if I was back in Russia, I don't think I'd be writing uh, funny sales books right now. Uh, but you know, uh, my parents have influenced me, my father, my father by being, uh, a very hardworking person um, and somebody who takes their responsibility seriously. If you say you're going to do something, you have to do it. Uh, and Thanks for listening to Real Sales Talk. And a big thank you to our sponsor, Convertist. If you enjoyed this episode, go write a review on iTunes or any other podcasting platform.